don't say I didn't warn you. All right, greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the episodic discussion. Today, we will be talking about paranormal and ghost media. So everything involving that, maybe some ghost encounters in real life. Do we believe in ghosts? All of that good stuff on this podcast tonight. So I'm your host, Renegade Operative, and I'd like to introduce my panel. So first we have Zamzar. How's it going? Happy to be here. It's going great. Tomorrow's Halloween, the best day of the year, the best day of this month so far. Next up is Max. Oh, my name is Max Olson Electro, and thanks for having me on about to talk about ghosts. And yeah, Halloween definitely is one of my favorite times of the year, and it broke my heart when I already saw Christmas stuff out today at Walmart. It made me cry a little bit, not gonna lie. Just get the shotgun, you'll be fine. It, I, I wanted to, it was <laughs> like, no, let me have this month, damn it. <laughs> Next up, we have Hollow Heart. Hello, everyone. And we're going to get right into the questions here. So excuse me as I am all disheveled. I'm going to try to pull up the doc. Just give me a second. Oh my God. I can read off if you like. Sure. Yes, please. That'd be great. All right. For our first question, and I don't know who wants to take it first. Since this is a podcast about paranormal and ghost discussions, then let's start off simple. Do you believe in the paranormal or not? Explain your reasoning. Okay. Uh, For me... For me, I need to keep this on. I don't know what I'm calling world for it. Um, so I'll, I, I am a Bible believing Christian, and in the Bible, it does talk a lot about there being different kind of ghosts, different kind of demons. Like this is something that threw me off a little bit. I'll admit, when we were starting this, is like we are not talking about demons. We are talking about ghosts specifically. And yeah, in the Bible, it does talk about that a lot and those that would talk to ghosts and stuff. So for me personally, do I believe in the paranormal? A hundred percent. Yes, I do. Now, does that mean I believe it in the same way as you see it in a lot of media? Not necessarily, nor will I pretend to have the most experience in it. But yes, I would say those things are entirely possible. It's just something that's... It, oh, someone joined in. Something, like something that is very specifically... The way I always heard it described was, is, it was as if a third-dimensional person was talking to a two-dimensional person. So it's something that's very hard to grasp onto. But yes, overall. I believe Ren might be muted right now. So, uh, hello. What about you? Uh, yeah, I do believe in the paranormal. Uh, <clears throat> a majority of my belief is in the fact that I'm a pagan and it kind of comes with the territory of believing in the spiritual world. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I've had different experiences throughout my life. Uh, and I've always been like, thoroughly immersed in uh, supernatural media just because it's always been kind of what gets me going um, as far as getting excited for uh, different things because I really like lore and whatnot and there's a lot of great lore in horror. Hold on, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. All right, uh, for some reason Discord is being weird, but uh, Yeats, uh, since you're here, introduce yourself, good sir. Hello, I am Yeet. Uh, Join on the server a couple months ago and this is my first podcast and i'm a huge fan of the paranormal i actually recently have been into uh into uh ghost hunters so well we're gonna talk about that later so we're going to start off with the first question that we have in the doc, and that's basically, um, do you believe in, like, paranormal figures in general, ghosts, all that stuff? Supernaturally, ghosts specifically, uh, not really. If you told, I believe that there's stuff out there, but ghosts in particular, no. So if somebody came up to me and said, hey, ghosts are actually real and proved it, then I would believe them. But... Right now, uh, until there is further evidence to suggest that ghosts are a definitive thing, then uh, no. All right, that's a fair answer. Samzara, did you go yet? I did not. Okay. Um, I would say that I would consider myself a skeptic. Um, I, if there was some sort of evidence to indicate that ghosts or the paranormal exist, 
Uh, I would believe that, but in real life, no. Uh, but I do think it is an entertaining concept. Uh, I think it's a comforting concept for for some people to have that idea that you know there might be something after, and if we could you know have some sort of interaction with the afterlife via ghosts or other paranormal link occurrences, that helps substantiate you know further things beyond uh, this life. Um, but I do not personally believe in that. I haven't seen any evidence for that. Uh, not to say I haven't had some strange occurrences that are pretty unexplainable or odd, um, but nothing that has pushed me, pushed the scale uh, or tipped the scale in the favor of ghosts existing. Um, but as a concept, I think it's fun and, and entertaining to, to play around with. Yeah, my reply is going to be the same as Zamzara. Now, I it's a little bit different, though. I do believe that maybe it might be something beyond afterlife or all that stuff, because, I mean, you know, I, I am a little bit spiritual in a sense, so I do think that maybe there could be something out there, but I also am a realist so i'm like until i get like an actual encounter of something in front of me i usually don't tend to believe it because it's a lot of you know hocus pocus bullshit out there and a lot of stuff out there put in media that is highly exaggerated at times uh but you know there's questions that i'm going to answer that i probably wouldn't do if given the opportunity and i think people probably know what they are but still um it's a fascinating concept and it's fun to play with and see uh what everyone thinks and and what they could do in media about it it's a lot of entertaining media out there about horror ghosts and paranormal in general but i need to see those sightings to actually believe it myself so did everyone go on this question before we move on to question number two so you're saying you three will believe once hollow summons one and i exercise it Right, and then we're all yeah. on board. We're all on board. All the there. Yeah. Get the Ouija board. You get your pagan bullshit going. Let's rock. Get but the... if you if you put it on tape, I wouldn't believe you. But if I saw it in uh, person, I would. Because there's uh, so much no editing fun. crap you could have done to make me not believe if, it. What if I get a really shitty camera and I like shake it the whole time? Like, oh so no! Look, no, so it looks like life footage. Then will you believe me? <laughs> no, that's make it worse. How this is a rip off? What in the world? So we're moving on to question number two, and that is, have you encountered a paranormal event in your life or anything remotely similar? Describe what transpired. So Max, I want you to go first. It's because I called out Hala. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm kidding with you, man. But so for me, there's been a few times in my life where it's like, ooh, I feel like something's watching me or maybe you hear a voice. But I feel like everyone goes through that kind of a thing. So I don't really want to count that. The closest one I've had to a real one, though, is um. so I served in the U.S. Navy for about four years. I was in Yokosuka, Japan, which is right in the middle of like the bell curve of it. And um, I worked as an IT guy. I talked to submarines on base there. There is actually a famous tunnel. And I didn't know about this until after the fact. Um, I found a few names for it. I might be saying it wrong. Some people call it just the Yaku the I always feel like I'm pronouncing Yokosuka wrong, even though I was there for however many years. But um, Yakuska Base Tunnel, some called the Gridley Tunnel, or just the Haunted One itself. And the story goes that there was a samurai that went through there as part of a mission. I forget exactly what it is. And he was assassinated before he could get there. And sometimes you can still see him. Now, obviously, this is, like, unsubstantiated. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, it's just a bunch of drunk squids that just went through and thought they saw something. It wasn't real. But for me, I forget... I want to say it was I was making sure one of my shipmates was getting it always sounds like I say shipmates. I was making sure a friend of mine was like getting home after a night of drinking. And I remember walking through that tunnel and very distinctly feeling like something was following me. And like it's a tight tunnel. So I was hugging the wall and I looked back and I saw a shape. And it was one of those things that once you actually looked at it, it went away. And I was like, oh, well, I've had a few drinks, too. Then it happened on the way back. And then later on, I went through there a few more times, and each time I felt like some kind of presence, something following me every now and then, like, you know, it was probably just the wind, but um, I kept seeing a figure behind, behind me. 
going through there. Nothing malicious, nothing like hearing voices to kill my family or anything like that, but yeah, definitely witnessed a few things there. It kind of creeped me out and made me not want to go through there for like, I think that was like two years into my deployment there. And I remember like a good six months to a year, like I would just avoid that tunnel like the plague because it creeped me out so much. But it wasn't anything like extremely visible or like in the movies or anything. It was just like a glance, a small flash of something. But uh, yeah, I would say that is the closest experience that I have had personally. All right, so it is the turn of Hollow Heart. What do you think about this question? Uh, I I have encountered some things throughout my life. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think of like an exact moment because I've had actually a lot of different things happen. Uh, of course, it's never been you know anything flying across the room kind of stuff. It's always just been uh, feelings, and I know that feelings can always be you know debunked to other things. But um, I'm trying to think of where I was because it was super. Oh, it was when I was with uh, I went ghost hunting with some friends because we used to do that from time to time, just like run around to uh known haunted cemeteries here in the midwest uh and kind of you know check things out and we were at uh one where you know the story was that there were you know children who hung out uh deceased children who hung out in the trees and would you know watch you know from the trees and while uh while i do believe in ghosts i don't necessarily believe that ghosts take the form of humanoids that used to roam the planet so like, I wouldn't really put it as that it was the children, but I definitely felt something within the woods itself watching out. Um, and it was definitely enough to make the hair on the back of my neck crawl, uh, which doesn't happen too often. Sanzar, what about you, buddy? I've had, I've had experiences similar to Hollow and um where we would do ghost hunting uh around places that there were urban legends like local urban legends oh this road is haunted this cemetery is haunted this park is haunted and we would go out to these places you know after midnight and sit in them or you know just watch and and kind of gauge a feeling of the area and you know we would hear things see things but nothing that couldn't be explained by an animal or even somebody else being around um there was one time where we were at a haunted cemetery and going in there was nothing you know on the road nothing out of the ordinary but leaving there was a dead deer in the road that just appeared and this was like a dead end road um there was only one way in and one way out so we would have seen it if we had come there there was nobody that had driven down that road that we heard you know we did this stuff late at night we would hear cars moving not sure how that got there that was a little made us a little uneasy um and there was a nearby haunted park that we sat in uh and we would see these kind of what we described as best in our you know these are teenage years so as a teenager the best we could describe it were glowing eyes um, but that could easily be explained by animals looking out of the the the, the forest line um but the most uh the i guess the spookiest one that i can't really explain is a bit of a longer story um but i'll try and summarize as best i can uh, my mom had a friend uh, when I was in high school, and she had two daughters, and one was older, getting married, and one was younger, still in, I think, middle school or late middle school, early high school. And she was waiting for the bus one morning, and tragically, somebody hit her with the car, and she passed away. But she was very excited about going to her older sister's wedding, and she had her outfit picked out and everything, uh, and she had these very specific shoes that she was excited to wear to the wedding. Um, so... She, like I said, she got hit, uh, got taken to the hospital, didn't make it. Uh, they took her off life support and she passed away. And the wedding, th this happened uh, maybe in the fall or winter. Uh, and the wedding wasn't until the following summer. And then that following summer, they have the wedding. And this was back before digital photography. You know, photographers had to come in, take pictures, develop them. You had to get them back. Um, and when they got the pictures back, there were some group photos that had um, people lined up taking, you know, typical wedding group photos. 
and there were a pair of kids' legs wearing those specific shoes in the photos. And it wasn't like um, she was like a bridesmaid or a flower girl that like um, anybody else would have been wearing those shoes. Um, and it was just the feet. There was no body attached to it that you could see. There was no sh real shadow to it, so you couldn't really tell where it was coming from. Uh, and they asked around, like, hey, they were like, did anybody have a kid wearing these shoes at, at our wedding? And nobody knew where it came from. So the only explanation is like, oh, well, that was her spirit there, you know, in spirit at the wedding. And we, there was never any explanation to it. So that's like the closest thing to a ghost encounter I've had um, that was kind of unexplainable. And we really never got any answer to. So, um yeah, that was definitely something that, that stuck with me and, and kind of pushes the scales into believing, but not quite all the way. Yeats, it is your turn. Have you had any paranormal encounters so far? Uh, good question. Like, big ones? Uh... It could be big, small scale, any of the above. Uh, I think I've had actually a lot of small ones. Uh, one that comes to mind is, oh, I was dry. I was going on a bus one time. We were going around the uh, our uh, neighborhood because I was going to uh, get uh, some lunch, and then we go by this house. I walk by it sometimes, and it's normally just a nice house and. This particular time, the windows were uh, wide open. So as we're driving by, I see this. Uh, you can see uh, it's a weird window because you can see like all the way inside. So when I'm looking out the window, all I see all of a sudden is just this, this doll that's moving around, <laughs> or not moving around, but just like at the window still, like. That's just there that just like appears I don't know how it just it just it just comes up to the window. There's nothing there before and then all of a sudden there's this doll but there's nobody in the back. There's no it's not even look like it was thrown or anything. It's just like pretty because it's perfectly like upright, like it was like it was made like one of the have you ever seen like Annabelle is an upright like that? And it just appears out of nowhere and I'm just like, what the fuck? But it was, it was nothing. It was just creepy as shit to me. Uh, other times, maybe it was like when I'm, I was walking alone one time uh, at night towards a paint uh, store that is up my street. And when I'm uh, walking home with the paint, I just said, you know, you ever seen like those movies where it's like, uh, or the wind blows to signify that like something's about to happen, kind of some final destination type thing, or just it, it felt like that, but like nothing actually happened. But it was just like I had this feeling that something was watching me, and then there was something that creeped me out the next morning was actually uh, uh, a tree fell down after a storm hit. But I didn't look at the weather beforehand, so uh, so that kind of shocked me. Uh, any other time? Uh, I mean, not all of these are like one to one because my memory is kind of fuzzy. But uh, you have any more? I'm trying. Actually, yeah, there was. Uh, they actually laying around. This one's actually pretty good. Is that uh? I was staying at a hotel one time after going to a haunted attraction to go to a hotel. And the, I go to the elevator and I press the down button. And once I'm almost to the bottom, it stops for like a second. And I'm scared of the crap out of my mind because I feel like something happened. But, uh, but uh, nothing, I was actually wrong, it just went down. The thing is, the reason that creeps me out so much is because the, uh, is because the, because the, uh, there was a hotel I was, the other, there was a hotel that was next to it that actually had, had somebody die in it. 
So that made me think I was gonna die. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they died, the other person died in the hotel elevator. And that creeped the shit out of me. And that made me think, like, maybe the fucking ghost went over to this one. Was trying to kill me for something. I mean, in hindsight, it was probably just weird coincidence, but... Yeah. Okay. I can I can go next then and we can move on to the next question. So uh, I have a few. Uh, I'll start with the obvious one. First and foremost, I do not sleep like anywhere near my roommate. So I mostly sleep by myself. And there was one occurrence. It actually still happens where I wake up with scratches on my back and I don't know where they came from i don't know how they got there i know it's not a case of like bed sores or anything like that because there are long fingernail scratches always on my back each and every single night uh so that's one super creepy thing that has happened another is there was a hotel i went to where clearly one of the tenants or the previous tenants basically killed themselves with a shotgun so when i was sleeping in their particular room where it happened there would be instances where the tv would turn on randomly i remember this too like it it always happens at 12 midnight the tv just cuts on and then the news starts playing and then i'm like what the fuck i don't i don't watch the tv why is the tv on so i had to ask the landlord why is this the case and I heard that the tenant who died was really into the 12 o'clock news, always watched it. Uh, that was one of her favorite national pastimes. And I was thinking to myself, that's really weird. I shouldn't be in here anymore. I'm going to get out of this place as soon as possible that following Sunday. And I did. Um, there's another story where I was with my best friend and I fell over and it felt like something pushed me but I don't know what it was. And then someone started laughing. I, I thought to myself it was him, but I, I know his voice and is very distinct. And I'm like, he doesn't sound that deep. So what is this laughing? Who is that? And so I looked at him. I didn't say anything because I, I thought if I did, or if I told him, he'd probably think I was crazy. So I kept it to myself, but that was one thing that happened. And then I think the last thing that happened that was really on the nose was there was a point where i was really bad in school i was cutting up and i remember i got suspended so i was in my brother's room one day he was playing shimu on the dreamcast and i went in there and i sat down on the bed and then i heard my name i know he's like right next to me it's not his voice again so i'm like are you calling me or something he's like no then i hear it again then i hear it a third time so I kind of went to the bathroom and I recomposed myself a little bit, wondering if I'm going crazy. I made some self apologies if I was bad in school. Uh, I was really freaking out. And then when I went back to sit in that same room, it all went away. So those are the four stories that I had that was really, really fucking weird and really, really fucking strange. Um, now we're going to move on to the next one. Uh, what makes the ideas of ghost scary in your opinion? I want Max to start this off. You sure it's not your cats or anything? Going no, I, I, my cats are 100% always downstairs. I never keep my cats in my room at all. That's, that's still happening to you? Yeah. Burn the house down. <laughs> don't, don't fuck. No, just don't. Jeez, that's creepy. I'd be freaking out a lot more about that. But um, so for the question of what makes the idea of ghosts scary in your in your opinion, uh, for me, it's twofold. And I have to tell a little bit of a story for it. So this was a while ago when Stranger Things first came out. I was watching it with my family. So it was me, my dad, my mom, my sister, and my wife. And um, we were just talking. And I would say it's the spoilers, but this is like in the first season, so it's not really a spoiler. When they're at the uh, facility that Eleven was in and they were like, you know, there's security guards. They're like trying to train the children. It's all about them being like psychics, essentially. Like we are going to experiment on these children to make them psychics and make them effectively weapons. And what really struck us, like this is specifically me and my dad talking. We were like, do you know how much it would absolutely suck to be a guard there? 
because the only chance you have against one of these psychic children when they go nuts is if you can take them down without you without them knowing that you're there you're really only a guard for things coming in because your armor won't help your weapon won't help nothing you have will help they will just psychically grab your brain stem, the brain stem grab your neck grab your eyeballs and just destroy it and lo and behold in the show that's kind of what happens you know to remove spoilers and not to describe anything and i think that aspect of ghosts is one of the reasons that they are so effective as like either a tor- uh, storytelling element or um, a villain or an enemy they effectively don't operate on any rules like i mentioned before it's like a third dimensional creature you know conversing with the second one the ability to move through walls the ability that they're just fully intangible that they can take your memories that they can like move the environment around that they can change your emotions change the atmosphere that pokemon is obviously a bit of a silly example but like going down the line for all those different kinds of ghosts all of the th- like possession like some some kind of skill or muscle that humans have to like fight off that theoretically that no one can ever train because it's not something we deal with. It is something that you are truly and completely defenseless against, which I think makes them like really unique because once you go up against one, you know, like in all the different shows and stuff, you have nothing. And depending on like the type of show, we'll talk more about those later. People try to run, people try to fight back, people try to find the source, people try to appease, and it just doesn't work unless you learn the ghost's rules and play by its rules. And there's like different mythologies, like um, in Japanese mythology, if you ever wonder why, um, once again referencing Pokemon, if you ever wonder why a lot of like dockside bridges are always at right angles, there's some mythology that ghosts have a real hard time turning. It's stuff like that. That is just really fascinating as a concept, and especially because it involves human life, which goes to my second point. It's universal around mythologies. The second point that I think makes them so interesting, so scary, is it forces you, we've mentioned this a little bit before, it forces you to confront the possibility of an afterlife. If you're a Christian, it's a demon. If you're a pagan, it's who knows what kind of spirit or one kind of malicious entity it, like if you don't believe there's anything it's the void what kind of emotional or spiritual force is keeping this thing here there's so many different angles and so many different ways you can go about it like can you you know can you use my ouija board to talk to my family and to speak to those that you've lo- that you have lost that you would love to talk to again is this some creature that's just following some pattern that was so hard set by a person that it just keeps happening for whatever reason. Is this something that's going to like, oh, it's a person that used to live in the house, so now it throws furniture because it's mad that someone else lives in here. There's so many different angles of really forcing you to confront what happens after you die. And I think that's what makes it really fascinating because in day-to-day life, it's really easy not to think about it. You know, hey, no matter what I believe or no matter what I think it is, when I die, I die, I'll figure it out when I get there. But seeing a ghost is like, oh, something's up does it prove anything we don't know and i think those two ideas of being defenseless and having to confront that concept of an afterlife is just what makes them so interesting and so immediately unnerving zanzar it's your turn yeah i kind of agree with um max on a lot of that where it's just a really cool uh, storytelling device because it's the fear of the unknown after death. It's the idea that there may be some way where you get stuck between life and death uh, still on this earth, but not fully on this earth. Um, and just all the different lore that goes into that from different cultures and all the different angles you can take on that, like um, Max was talking about. Um and, and yeah, it's just, you know, there there's so many different um, storytelling, like, you know, overcoming, you know, utilizing ghosts to overcome, you know, struggles. Uh, we see it in film all the time. Um, and, and yeah, it's just that idea that these things can interact with us on some level, but we can't really interact with them. Um, I think Hollow was mentioning it's the the kind of the or either Yeet or Hollow or Max, I forget who was talking about it, but like the idea that it's like a three dimensional creature trying to or being entity, whatever you want to call it, trying to communicate with a two dimensional creature or um, like if you want to go Slaughterhouse Five with it, like fourth dimensional trying to interact with third dimensional, like 
they can interact with us, but we can't interact with them because our minds just can't comprehend it. That's a, that's a pretty, it's pretty cool um, storytelling device in any multiple um, amount of mediums. All right, Hollow Heart, it is your turn. Do you find Go scary? Uh, so I, I don't find the idea of uh, spirits in real life to be scary. Uh, even though I do believe in them, I, I just, I, it's too long of a discussion for me to get into right now. Uh, but sticking with the whole idea on media, um, I think one thing that really, really drives home and makes ghosts scary is really the whole concept with, and it's a trope that's used a lot now, um, where ghosts are the, basically messengers of you done fucked up. Um, you did something wrong, you thought you could escape from it, you thought you could run away, but the ghosts are the one that holds you to that wrongdoing that you did. And it's kind of, you know, it's a little, you know, kind of, you know, don't do this kind of ghost story thing, but it's, you know, it's along the trope of, um, you know, you can't run away from these things and whatnot. And uh, holding yourself accountable, honestly, for humans is one of the scariest thing a human could do. Uh, and that's where I find a lot of the fear in it is just the the fear and the truth that at the end of the day, you're going to have to hold yourself accountable against the unknown. What about you? Ye ye you there? Uh, yeah, I'm just trying to think that like what point to talk about that. The uh, other two have gone over and I think one thing for me personally that I feel like ghost is making ghosts really scary is how in a lot of in a kind of not a lot of stories but in a couple of stories is it's uh it's used as like a loved one and how can because because for you guys you've talked about how uh, I forget who specifically but it was talked about how the idea of an afterlife but uh, I lean more towards like not not even exactly after like the fact that there's like people that interact with you oh yeah you talked about the 3d 2d point but the fact that people can re-interact with you in a non-conventional way like the fact you can go up to somebody today and say hey hi and you're just two normal human beings but the the next thing you know all of a sudden they go through a wall is it scary but it's also the fact that like you have ghosts that are like casper ghostbusters where they're like obviously ghosts then you have ghosts which are more human-like, but the only difference is that, that, that they can go through walls, but they all look all normal, which I think is even more terrifying because it's so similar, yet there's a striking difference between you and it, and that makes you question about yourself, and are you a ghost, or are you real? And this is all, like, very technical stuff, and there's obviously, like, a big difference between a crazy ghost, like Casper, versus something that's similar to you but my point is that like ghosts can be very familiar which i think hits a home a lot more than like demons sometimes even though demons can be cast by as a ghost it's just that ghosts can be what what can separate ghosts from humans is just very thin line at times and i think that is what scary the most because i don't i think a lot of people don't want to become ghosts but the fact that the line can be so thin and that you could just die and become one is a is while morbid is a very scary topic yeah my opinion on this is pretty much similar to everyone else i'm just you know it is it's not also like i am not scared of them because i i am like i'm pretty much a big chicken about a lot of stuff but it it sort of dwells on that fear of the unknown like what is this thing where does it come from if i encounter it like what's calling to me am i hallucinating it's a lot of factors that come into fruition when you ask questions about things you don't know about or things you know you're not supposed to be messing with and 
you know, I, I wouldn't be any in, in any like high, highly resonant ghost areas at all. If I have the forethought, I would avoid it because it's just natural. It comes with the territory of trying to not only protect my sanity, but to protect myself. So I, I do believe there is higher powers and afterlifes and all that stuff. But uh, in terms of like just avoiding it if I can and and minding my business and, and going about my ways, that's what I would do. There are definitely scary thoughts when you consider it, it's especially when you think of death and everyone's like scared of dying and, and scared of losing like loved ones. And, you know, hopefully spiritually, um, the person is strong and that, you know, you want to make sure everyone's in a good place and stuff like that. So it's a lot to think about on that premise. Um, it's a easy, it's like very easy for people to live um just being carefree as much as possible which is probably the best way to go about it but uh in my personal opinion i i think it is definitely creepy i will stay away from it as much as possible and hopefully you know i don't have any more encounters like that again outside of the back stuff which is very weird but uh that's, it's just something to think about at the end of the day uh, so we're going to continue on to the movies, uh, you know, favorite ghost movies and stuff like that. So this is a top three favorite paranormal movies. I'm going to go really quickly on this one before I let everyone else go. So I just want to say The Shining, a uh, great movie by Kubrick. I, I, I loved it. Um, just the idea of the ghost communicating to the boy and the boy having all these thoughts of the people in the motel you know the red rum scene murder on the wall and then you see it on the mirror it, it's very riveting and creepy uh jack nicholson fantastic in that movie as he slowly started to become crazy like uh the paranormal thing is like a secondary sort of thing in that movie but the the real crux is how this man's mental state just deteriorated because of this place and they get stuck there and it gets even crazier when you have like a serial killer and a mother trying to protect her child uh i i thought that was a great movie great premise great setup great characters uh the ring you know it's a simple answer i, I haven't seen any of the juan movies but i have seen that 2000 ring movie and i i enjoyed that interpretation of the ring um those people you know being on borrowed time and, and and stuff like that and trying to do their best to uh survive you know uh i would say grudge also as well like uh, all of that stuff when they did their adaptations in the early 2000s were good and i think oculus was another movie that i seen that was really great um mike flanagan always uh bending the minds and you don't know what's going on with this mira but apparently there's a lot of murders in this house and it's all connected to that one setup. And then you see at the end, it's like, once again, people are driven by madness, uh, parallel scenes. And because of all the stuff that happens in the mirror, you know, people don't believe the guy at the end. Uh, a lot of people thought that was a melancholy shock value gut punch. But in my honest opinion, I, I think that was the only way it was going to go because uh, the thing about, you know, depravity and, and thoughts of the mind dwindling down is, is anyone going to believe me after this super paranormal event? And the answer in that movie is no. So I, I kind of like how that was executed a little bit, but I can see the other side saying, I, I wish this guy would have got out and the truth would have been told and everything like that. But overall, I, I enjoyed all those three films. I, I thought they were fantastic. So I'm going to move on to Zamzara yeah um so i've i was looking at my list of three movies here that i want to talk about and i i seem to have found a, a the running theme in all of these movies is um ghosts are trying to help people um so first uh i have obviously the sixth sense uh had a big impact on me um it was one of the first movies I had seen in um, theaters. It came out when I was, I think, 11 years old. Went and saw that in theaters uh, with both of my parents, and I couldn't sleep for a week. It really messed with me. Um, 
So there were like the especially the well, the one scene that sticks with me is in the school and they have the three bodies hanging by nooses uh, in the stairwell. And that really stuck with me. Uh, and the other one was the person on the bike um, that he sees. Uh, the, those those scenes, for some reason, stick out in my head. Um, but I don't need to talk about Sixth Sense anymore. I think everybody's probably seen that at this point. Um, the other movie that I like is that's a ghost movie is Stir of Echoes. If anybody has seen that, that is a um, Kevin Bacon movie um, where he him and his family uh, move into a house and um, they're in this house and it's getting it had been renovated and um, he bought it from, I think his, I don't know if it was a neighbor or brother-in-law. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. But her sister, uh, his wife's sister, his sister-in-law, does a hypnosis on him and kind of unlocks his mind to be able to interact with the other worlds, paranormal realms. And he starts getting communications um, from... A ghost and it's trying to lead him on this journey and he's just it's basically him trying to figure out what's going on and why this ghost is trying to communicate with him but everybody around him just thinks he's going insane um but that that's a very good movie if you haven't seen stir of echoes i would highly recommend it uh and the last one is the frighteners uh it's a peter jackson movie before he did lord of the rings uh, that stars Michael J. Fox, and it's about Michael J. Fox, who is a paranormal investigator, but he can actually see ghosts. He experiences uh, near death. He has a near death experience, so he can see ghosts. And he basically recruits these ghosts to go into homes and cause mayhem. And then he comes out and clears the paranormal activity. Um, but this spirals out of control and um, it leads him on a, an adventure um, where he thinks death is following him around and killing people around him. And it just kind of spirals from there. Um, but Peter Jackson flair, uh, kind of over the top, comedic, um, but still horror. Uh, if you've seen Brain Dead, a.k.a. Dead Alive, it's kind of the same thing. Not quite as gross and gory, um, but that same kind of campy tone. Um, so those are my three. I would like to give honorable mentions to Grave Encounters 1 and 2. I just watched those recently for the first time, and I thought they were really well done uh, movies um, for being low-budget horror movies. They were found footage movies, and it's about, like, these ghost hunters that go lock themselves in an asylum, and just strange shit starts happening. Um, but they're, like, uh, the ghost adventure guys or the ghost hunter-type people that are on Discovery and all those channels. Um, but... Great movies, um, but those are probably, like I said, my top three and a couple honorable mentions. All right, Max, it is your turn. Top three favorite ghost movies. So for me making my list, I felt kind of bad because we mentioned a little bit before that like a lot of ghost stuff is kind of like tied with demon stuff. I'm not going to pretend like I kind of joked about it. I, I am not as well educated in this department as I should be, probably because I don't like crying myself to sleep at night. You know, I, I like pretending to sleep well, but um, I had to remove like what's specifically demon, what's specifically ghost. And for me, I would like to echo Oculus was probably one of the scariest movies I ever watched in my life. And I know there's probably a bunch of people out there that are like, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, it's just gore and brah, brah, brah. But what I absolutely loved about Oculus was the mind games it played how it opened up this premise of like yes there's this mirror it does stuff it houses souls it makes people forget to eat it makes people do things without realizing it makes time move in different ways it defends itself and sidebar i never understood in the movie why someone didn't just from as long range as possible with a sniper rifle start shooting at the mirror but the kids had a plan and i like that they actively tried to kill it the mirror itself, even if I didn't agree with how they did it, and the mirror defended itself. It summoned things. It screwed with their minds. And it was just this really well done, like really well done and creepy movie. And at the end of it, where it shows like, look, here's all the victims, including, and I won't spoil, but it, yes, was it a gut punch, but it was an incredibly effective gut punch. That movie scared the crap out of me the other one was um this is probably one that's unsurprising to everyone is the grudge also known as juan i watched the um i believe yeah it is the american remake of it that came out in 2004 uh we'll talk about it a little bit later when we talk about um ghost villains 
And as much as I mentioned earlier that like, oh, ghosts are really interesting because they don't truly operate off of any kind of rules. The Grudge, and um, I forget the name of the actual girl self, if it is Juwan, someone can correct me on that. But um, I really liked how she was able to like break rules. She didn't really operate off of anything. It was just constantly like harassing people, following people, doing more and more messed up things. But I really liked it when she did operate off of like, oh, this horrible thing happened. And as a result, these um, these horrible occurrences that happened in my family that caused me to die and be in this anguish, they're repeating. The patterns, I think, are what made that movie so interesting to me. I need to watch the other ones. I know eventually there's like the grudge versus Ringu or whatever it's called, which sounds hilarious to me. But um, I really did enjoy that first one, especially the iconic going down the stairs at different frame rates, the child that showed up out of nowhere, the girl who lost a jawbone and you just find this bloody piece of meat. And you're just like, what in the world is this? And then later on, you find the girl and her tongues hanging out. I think it was very well done and I really enjoyed it. And the last one I'm going to say is a little bit of a twofer. And th this is for sillier reasons, but it kind of occurred to me while we were talking about it. Uh, Ghostbusters and Danny Phantom. Yes, they are not necessarily horror films. This is more tongue-in-cheek comedy. Danny Phantom is, you know, it's a Nickelodeon show. But I do think they kind of have a lot of fun with the idea of ghosts, even if a lot of it ends up being, oh, this is basically just magic of people shooting lasers and stuff. But, like, it's fun, it's happy, and it shows a more comedic air to it. And sometimes, especially in Ghostbusters, like, regardless of whichever one you... Like, regardless of whichever one you pick, they have some really genuinely creepy moments. I'm blanking on his name. The villain from the second one who is based on the painting is really a truly terrifying kind of villain. So I definitely want to mention those movies and shows like they're a great time, even if it's not truly trying to make you pee your bed at night. Kind of a horror like we've been talking about with the other movies. Hello, Heart. It is your turn. Top three favorite horror movies go in terms of Ghost. Uh, okay, so my first one is actually going to be a double, uh, and it's going to be the Grave Encounters movies because it was kind of honorably mentioned, and now I have to talk about it. Um, so the Grave Encounters movies uh, really go together to me because they they the first one tells the story, the second one finishes the story. Uh, but they do a really great job on telling the story from the genre of the, like, old asylum uh, ghost stories. And I have to say, I think one of the things that really got me about that movie was... Um, so there's a, there's a part where... This is basically when things are really starting to pop off. Uh, they lose... I believe they lose, like, their cameraman. They lose someone... Uh, and they're like, okay, you know what? Forget this. We're going to get out of here. Um, and they go to get out of here, and they open the front door, and the front door is just a brick wall. Like, they open the door, and it's just a brick wall. Um, there's other instances where they, uh, you know, follow, they follow an exit sign, but the exit sign just keeps ru running them through a hallway that doesn't end. So, like, that kind of stuff really gets me because it, it really kind of, like, it flirts with the eldritch horror, horror stuff, you know, horror of, you know, unknown dimensions and whatnot. But it's it's really fun to me when you get into the stories of, like, ghosts kind of manipulating human dimensions, manipulating the human mind to uh, either, either manipulating the dimensions to really be an endless hallway or manipulating the mind to thinking that they're running through an endless hallway. Uh, the second one for me is going to be 13 Ghost. 13 Ghost is uh, OG classic as far as I'm concerned when it comes to ghost movies. Uh, probably one of the best ghost movies that has ever been made. And I really liked the story that they told there with like uh, the, the house that was basically a puzzle box that was a prison for the ghost. And, you know, as the story is being told, this house is actually moving and different rooms are appearing and disappearing. Uh, you know, we even see that dude get completely sliced in half as a, as a wall, you know, comes down because it's just all a glass house, basically. And the ghosts in there are really good because they're, they're dark perversions of the Zodiac is basically what they are. Um, and they all have their own, their own lore, their own background, their own story. Uh, I think the Juggernaut was definitely the scariest to me. I believe that's the one that had its head in the cage. Um, that one was pretty creepy. And then number three would have to be Ghost Ship. 
um, strictly just because the opening scene to Ghost Ship was absolutely sp spectacular. Uh, the uh, ghost or, you know, spirits manipulating the uh, hook to let go of uh, the, the metal, like, wire, and it just flies across the bed the deck of the ship pretty much decapitating every single person standing on the deck of the ship and there was like a big party and you know it, it's just really really good movie yeet it is your turn what is your top three favorite paranormal movies okay i'm just gonna list three i don't really think they're in particular order uh one is ghostbusters one specifically Another is, I'm probably going to, I'm still, I've still been debating, but I'm probably going to say Hereditary, and then another one, oh, man, I have so many favorites, uh, I'll just go with The Shining, uh, so the reasons those are my top three, I'll start with Ghostbusters, since it's probably the easiest one, is that I feel like it's one of the very... How do I, it's one of the few ones I find generally, genuinely like funny while still being somewhat scary, because I think not a lot of media uses camp nowadays, so I always go back to that for a little bit of camp, but also because it's actually scary because uh, it'd be. Yeah, I got it. okay. Uh, well, basically, I think you've seen Ghostbusters one. It's uh, uh basically you have. I don't really, and I don't want to go in depth to it because I feel like everybody's seen it. I don't want to just want to recite it. Uh, so ghosts start terrorizing the town, and you have. You know what I'm just gonna say. The reason I stop. I feel so. Okay, I'll just work on the hereditary because that's one I also like is because you have it's a ghost story, but uh, you never actually see the ghost, which is something I always like. It's, it's one of the things I like is when there's the ghost doesn't actually have a physical form, it just possesses people. No, I didn't say it. Uh, I'm so sorry. I forget everything. I forgot to say that my number one favorite, uh, Evil Dead. I'm just gonna go through. That. I skip everything. I... Uh, Evil Dead One is well, one, two. Not really during the rest of them. I still like them, but they're not per scary. So the reason that I like them so much is because Evil Dead One, especially, and two, is that you get to see Ash and his friends go to a cabin. And when they start summoning demons, everybody starts losing their minds. And the thing I like about it so much is that you see the struggle that we talked about earlier with the uh, uh, afterlife. And you can see like him struggle with terms with, uh, with his friends dying. And that's something that it doesn't go too deep into, but, uh, but you see like how he's shook by it. And that's why, like, that's why his progression seems like good in the... In the from each film is that like he's he's his mind and he even kind of mild spoilers just you know if you don't really want to is that he eventually gets possessed at one point and then eventually overcomes that but the fact that like the movie the movies deal with like him and his vulnerability as a human being as it could compared to the the Deadites is really, really emotional because you see, as you see, uh, you see a lot of movies focus on the monsters more. You see a lot of movies focus on the, 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 the gore, the violence, but you don't really see focus on the protagonist too much. And that's what, uh, that's what I like a lot about the Evil Dead. But the key about the ghost, the Deadite specifically, and why they are good is that they are just fucking pieces of shit. They will trouble you like there's no tomorrow. That's why I feel like there's not enough. That's why also why I like Ghostbusters is that there's this bit of silliness, although Evil Dead does it, I think, better 
because while it is still funny, it is more serious, and I think that tone hits me way harder. All right, so we are going to move on to the next question, which is jumping media from movies to video games. So, Max, what is your favorite video game series involving paranormal or ghost encounters? Uh, for me, strictly talking about ghosts, I'm probably going to steal the one that everyone says, uh, Silent Hill and Fatal Frame. However, sticking strictly with Fatal Frame, I would, or sorry, sticking strictly with ghosts, I would say Fatal Frame comes to mind much more. I love the atmosphere and I love, so with ghosts, a lot of things that we think of is like the big, you know, the big scare, the big spirit dragging you to hell, and like all these different things, pans flying and everything. What I love about those games is that they're willing to be subtle, especially um, if I was going to pick favorites, I'd probably say, I know it's like, oh, Crimson Butterfly, oh, Main of Blackwater. For me, I would say it's made in a Blackwater. That game is chock full of so many different small little details. Like, I don't... It, sure, is it fun to see, like, a, a possessed doll, like, run at you with a knife? Yeah, of course, it's a great time. But it's so much scarier when you're just in a room full of them and one of their heads fall off. And you just... You hear something fall and you freak out and you're, like, looking around, your spirit camera's out, and it's just a head that fell off. Or, like, one of their eyes start glowing until you look at them a uh, painting falls over when you don't expect it you see a woman hanging and then you realize she isn't there anymore that game absolutely nails subtle horror and i would definitely say in terms of um in in terms of videos because i feel like a lot of video game things they feel like they have to jump scare you uh you know for example another one that would come up this one might seem a little bit weird it's Five Nights at Freddy's. That game absolutely nails atmosphere. It nails, like, confusing lore. It nails this nightmarish feeling of being unsafe. But what's the main thing it does to you? Well, it just runs at you and freaks you out. And, you know, there's a giant animatronic that's, like, seven feet tall trying to, like, shake you and shove you into a suit. It's very good at being subtle, but it more creates stress. While Fatal Frame will let that slow burn kick in, uh, specifically made in a Blackwater, when it starts raining, even when nothing happens, you know the ghosts are coming. You see an item on the ground and you want to pick it up, but you realize every time you try to pick something up, you know a ghost is going to try to hit you, or when you come through a door, the same kind of thing. Not to mention how it treats um, Japanese mythology with uh, Shintoism, Buddhism, Hindu uh, Hinduism, like all that kind of like references and things. It brings them all together extremely well, especially with the rituals that they have to do to try to keep this other world from coming in. And when it does come in, how it all like culminates and like destroys this village and draws people into it. I just think they are masterclass games in regards of ghosts. Like, in regards, yeah, I should say that in, in terms of like just ghosts strictly, Fatal Frame just does an incredibly good job. I would talk about Silent Hill as well, but that's. There are ghosts involved, but I feel like that shouldn't be the focus of my specific video games. Damzor, it is your turn. Uh, favorite ghost medium in video games? So you, what's your favorites? My favorite ghost video game, uh, of course, is going to be a tie between Pac-Man and Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just... Just kidding. I didn't uh, even think of Luigi's Mansion. Damn it, that's a good uh, one though. That's actually a really good video game. It is. Do it. It's not good. Especially the first one. Um, oh, the, that one was banned from multiple countries for being too. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> um, so I'd say it's strictly ghost game. I'd say Visage is probably my favorite uh, ghost game that I've I've played at least in even in recent memory. Um, it's it just sticks to this is a ghost story, uh, and that's all we're going to be talking about is ghosts. Where like we've already discussed multiple times, ghosts kind of have a lot of crossover with demons, and in the case of one of my other favorite kind of paranormal games, Fear, um, it crosses over into sci-fi. Uh, a little bit towards the end it's not strictly like okay this is paranormal and that's it um 
So Visage is probably the top of my list, but I also want to mention Eternal Darkness because that is a game that once again kind of devolves into like a little bit of demon and occult stuff uh, later on in the game. Uh, but in the early hours when it's messing with like fake messing with your TV volume, your TV brightness, turning off your system, resetting it, deleting your save files, like it made you feel if you were playing that at the time on a CR CRT TV on a regular GameCube, it made you feel like your technology was getting taken over by something that you didn't have control over. Um, you know, it was the um, the oh, what was it? The Mantis fight from Metal Gear Solid, just like an entire game of that, though. Um, so it, it was really great. I, I really liked Eternal Darkness and what it did at the time. But um yeah, if I had to be pressed to stick to just ghost stuff, it probably going to be Visage. All right, so it is Hollow Heart's turn. Have you gone yet? No, I haven't. I can uh, go real quick, but I'm going to have to mm. pop off and get a migraine. <clears throat> okay. Um, when it comes to ghost games, honestly, one of my favorite games I've ever played was Geist. I don't know if anyone's played it or if anyone remembers it, but it was a GameCube game. And basically the premise of the story were, was that you were this character who was was murdered or your soul was uh, rent, wrenched from your body. I can't remember the exact mechanics of how he became the spiritual thing. But it was really cool because it had a lot of like possessing mechanics so like basically a lot of the game was you possessing uh, different characters within the laboratory to gain better access to different areas and progress to the game uh that being said you also there was a way for them to find out if you're possessing someone and then that could cause more problems plus you also had other uh ghost entity like people that were like you uh, that you had to fight against as well. So that was definitely one of my favorite, because especially because I just like the whole idea of like creeping up behind someone and possessing them for like three minutes kind of thing. All right, Hollow Heart, give your outro since you're signing off pretty soon, and then we will move on to the next person. Okay, um, I'm Hollow Heart. You can find me on both YouTube and Twitch at Hollow Heart. I stream mostly Minecraft and horror games. All right, we hope you get better, and we're going to let you outro uh, everything, so you take care of yourself and enjoy yourself. So we're going to move on to the next person, Yeet. It is your turn. Uh, favorite horror video games with ghosts. Mm -hmm. uh, start off with the obvious one, Resident Evil 7. Uh, next one would have to be, I'm just going to say Silent Hill as well. I know it. I know the other, I know you guys already said this, but I do it as well. I mean, it's just too good for me. Third one. Oh, man. I'll just. Actually, I just thought of, I'll just go, uh, I'll go with Outlast. I think, um, and... RE is, well, the beginning hours goes, but the rest is like mold, virus, stuff like that. Evelyn. Uh, yeah, e Evelyn is, she seems like a hallucination from the virus I mean, as well. I thought the hallucination stuff was enough to technically, I mean, I could say another game if that's. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'll just, actually, I was going to say, so on the topic, I'll say Luigi's Mansion 3. <laughs> I mean, that does count, and it's yeah, a paranormal it ghost game. I, was say, I just want to say, I really like the game. That's uh, probably my favorite in the series. Uh, I'll start with... Uh, I'll start with Outlast. Outlast uh, has actually... Is a, you might not think it's... It is a, it's kind of iffy paranormal game, because while a lot of it is, like, based in, like quote-unquote science you have like the wall rider I'm, 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 can i dog it i'll talk the spoiler warning no we have, we've already talked about spoilers about outlast on the last podcast so you're good oh okay then, it's the uh, nazis there you're fine don't worry about it you could just be like the wall rider and the fact that like the inmates go insane and like just adds this paranormal feeling and i this is one reason but the reason i like it 
the reason I think it does paranormal well is because it draws a fine line between what is like paranormal and what is uh is real. Which I, I, I don't really like the second game too much, even though it's arguably more like paranormal and like religious and stuff like that. It I feel like the fact that like the first game had kind of an explanation for things, but not exactly everything, but you can get most of the story down was better. I don't mean, know, people might argue that like in paranormal stories and like supernatural less is uh is better. I think that comes down to a personal preference. I think the fact that uh, the I was gonna say I was gonna say uh, that that there is like a mix between paranormal and like real people makes it even scarier because it's not like you because you have threats that are tangible that are real and you have threats that are not tangible. And the mix-up between the two always keeps you on edge. As for Silent Hill, I'm just going to count the town as paranormal ghosts. And the re Silent Hill 2 is one of my favorite games. I've, I've talked with uh, Ren about this a bit. But one of the reasons I like it so much is that... Well, I mean, I don't think it... I think it actually does paranormal like we haven't talked about with introspection and... Not really a four. I feel like we needed to talk more about like paranormal in the sense of like not just like actual threats, but like paranormal in the sense of uh, it's of just the force because like with Silent Hill, the paranormal is more of a is a they don't refer to it as paranormal as much as like they would say like Luigi's Mansion or off or fatal frame because it's paranormal is not really it's upfront spectacle and spectacle is in its atmosphere and its uh themes and its characters and its stories so we can move I'm on sorry man no that's fine uh so uh i wanted to do uh my game selection really quickly and that is Fatal Frame. Uh, Fatal Frame's really good for all the paranormal stuff that we have and kind of going around into these creepy dojos with, you know, bloodstained priestesses and they're roaming all over the place and you see faces in the wall and the ceilings. It, the first one made my skin crawl like a lot because it is a game where the jump scares are plentiful and they do them like often it's like every singular second and they're all good jump scares no music all atmosphere and if there is music it's creeping in like slowly but surely that's the one thing that i really like about fatal frame uh then we move on to silent hill 4 the room it's a game full of ghosts so i feel this is where it makes sense to bring that correlation into the fold and say hey there's ghosts everywhere everything's a haunting your entire apartment can be haunted by will and they will take it away from you you'll see things like bloody shoe prints and slippers going to your refrigerator dead cats in your refrigerator a lot of painstaking actions go on in that singular room and it makes you wonder when is the next haunting and how do you exercise it as well as uh, dealing with the antagonist, which I will talk about on the next question. But it's something that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, creepy, atmospheric, uh, the fact that there were two dead children in the game as enemies and they were twin headed figures chasing you around, calling out receiver to the protagonist, Henry Townsend, because he's part of a ritual that is going on in the game. Uh, so, I, I really enjoy Silent Hill 4 The Room for what it was. It was a divisive game, but it still homed on those themes rather perfectly as opposed to uh, some of the others. And, you know, the other Silent Hill games in terms of atmosphere and ghosts, 
they ain't that bad either like two when they knock down stuff you, you think something is possessed or whatever but it's not it's all in the mind and the mind is a scary place as we said time and time again so i want to move on to the next question and that is basically uh, i skipped this one but it was favorite ghost villains in media they could be from video games or movies and i want zamzara to go first sure um, my favorite ghost villains from movies is actually from the Frighteners. Um, you, it's two ghosts, um, or a ghost and a living person. And the ghost is the ghost of a serial killer and his girlfriend is still alive. And those are like the two villains of the movie, the two antagonists of the movie. And they're just very interesting characters to watch wreak this mayhem. And like I said, it's, a, it's kind of a layered onion that as the movie goes on, keeps getting peeled back more and more um but it, it's they're really well done really well written and well acted um you believe them to be psychopaths after they kind of let down their mask it's it's really cool uh and both the ghost and the the living girlfriend have a mask that they're keeping up for different reasons uh and when those come down they just are completely unhinged uh, and it's really really fun to watch um and other than that uh gentleman ghost from dc comics i really like uh he's just a thief um not really violent uh sometimes he's an actual ghost sometimes he's a person pretending to be a ghost um but he's just a really funny written character and, and i really enjoy him uh as a as a character uh when it comes to video games i don't really have any favorite ghost villains per se um so i'll just leave it at those two okay fair enough max it's your turn lost the mute button for a second there uh, for me, uh, for me specifically, talking villains. I I suspect when you mention when you mention Silent Hill Four, you're specifically talking about Walter. So I will not talk about him whatsoever. I just want to mention the room again because it is it a villain? No, but the the reason I love the room, like in Silent Hill Four, like not just the whole game, specifically your apartment that you're stuck in, because in ways at first it feels like a place of safety. But as the game goes on, more and more things start getting wrong with it. You start losing health if you can't figure out how to exercise things. It just has so many wonderful ways to um, just to scare and unsettle you. And I really like that as another aspect of Ghost, that like a place that you see as safe, your home, your family, your... I guess it really is, you know, your castle. There's no other real way to describe that. Becoming more and more dangerous over time. I think it's wonderful. But in terms of direct villains, I'm going to go back to Silent Hill specifically. And I had to look up their names because I'm awful with names. It's Kiri Himuro from Fail Frame 1, Sai Kurosawa from 2, and Ose Kurosawa from Main of Blackwater. I bunch them all together because they all fulfill a very similar role. General spoilers for Fatal Frame. Each game normally revolves around some kind of ritual that needs to be done in order to keep... Hell, the underworld, the other world, whatever you want to call it, the darkness, the void, the black swamp, all from seeping in. And these rituals, unfortunately, have to involve a pure girl being sacrificed. In the first one, it involves ropes ripping her apart and the ropes being used to hold it back. Um, I for, like, I'm blanking on the other ritual for uh, Crimson Butterflies. Basically, like, twins have to be slain. And for um, May in a Blackwater, they have to be put into a box and drowned awful horrible things but it's just something that's expected in the village because oh my goodness if we don't do it literally hell is going to come through this world and in each game something kind of goes wrong and as a result the ritual isn't done perfectly uh speaking specifically on the first one uh kiri fell in love and she was meant to be pure and even that love in her heart made her impure by like by the rules of the ritual, even if we look at it as like, no, oh, that's awful, that's horrible. No, according to the ritual, that was too much. And as a result, her personality was split. One side that wanted to complete the ritual and fulfill like fulfill her purpose. The other side was just so angry and so hateful towards everything that she couldn't experience love that she wanted to make everyone else feel that same way. So all sorts of people that came to the village to investigate or, you know, just living their life, right? would disappear and be found with rope marks ripped limb from limb. I mentioned earlier with um, The Grudge that as much fun as it was seeing an enemy, or if you want to call that an entity, an enemy, that doesn't operate on any form of rules, 
as much as it's fun, it's also kind of unfair, which is what I really liked about the Fatal Frame Girls. They all have rules. They all have purposes. They all have areas. They all have a desire. You can understand it. And if you work around them, it helps you to win the game, not just on a mechanical standpoint as a video game, but as like imagine yourself in real life. Why does this girl want to kill me? Oh, it's because she's mad about X. It's no I'm constantly coming up with new powers. And by the end of the movie, there's like 10 Juans and they're all of varying different sizes and it makes no sense and there's no correlation. They all have very specific rules that like dictate how they operate. And I just really like that about them. Not to mention their design is fun between the rain, the hair, the hands. These are all known and known well stereotypes, but they are just done extremely well. And I always love it in those games when like the camera starts going black and white and fuzzy and you see them coming slow and you know there's nothing you can do if they get their hands on you. You're dead. I love the air and the music that comes with them. So, yeah, for specific entities, I have to give it to the Fatal Frame Girls. Okay, so I'm going to go real quick. I thought that I guess I could count him as a ghost, but I mean, Silent Hill 4, Walter Sullivan, I, I, I thought he was fantastic for what he was. I know the room is the main attraction, but I like his lore backstory and the fact that, yes, he is a murderer who basically took all this pain and suffering out on the world and started to kill all these people like a serial killer and then after death where he killed himself he was under the ritual of holy assumption which means he was a ghost that came back and started killing more people after the fact to complete his 21 sacrament rule so i i thought the lore behind that was great i wish though that the acting for the main antagonist and the main protagonist between those two was a little bit more better and illustrated but still for what they told us i i like the tale that they had to offer and that was great for another villain that i really liked hmm just to keep this short i would say the ring girl i mean she's it's super easy but you know she's been in everything uh just the long hair and you know walking around and stuff like that I'm not, I'm not sure if it's ring or grudge but whatever uh just that girl alone we've seen in media time and time again and it's always creepy seeing that long-haired japanese child like dead deceased and the skin is like decayed walking towards you and it's not pretty it's not something that you want to be in the same room with so it's one of those things where it's like always going to scare you no matter what because um it, it brings a level of uncertainty to what's going to happen in that situation and what they could do to other people so that's my like two villains i'm sure there's a lot more but those are the two off the top of my head uh yeet what about you uh villains uh no too many i'm trying to think of but like besides the ones you guys said which are cool i'm trying to think of like favorite villains or ghosts i guess yeah i guess the the demon from the uh exorcist could be a uh, i guess uh, I mean, it's, it's possession, so you. if if you want to limit it down to possession to make it easy, that's fine. Yeah, I'll yeah, just go with that. I'll get, go with that because uh, cause it's just bat shit insane. And that's, I mean, that's, that's all you need to be, be, be that's all you need to do at the end of the day to be a good uh, ghost. Probably just to be insane. That's why, uh, that's why a lot of movie monsters get popular. But I also like it because it was like one of my uh, uh, one of the first times I personally saw like extreme demons because typically everything before that for me was like pretty tame and not really head turning and uh and very 
Like, that, that gets scary. I mean, nowadays nothing really scares me, but back when I watched it for the first time, it was. All right. And uh, I think I actually might have to. Yeah, I'm going to have to dip. That's okay with you guys. That's fine. Uh, do you have any social media you want to plug? Uh, no, actually. Okay. I wish, uh, I'll just say that it was nice having my uh, first time. I'm sorry if people watching this on YouTube. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just fumbled over a bit too much. No, it's it's all good, man. Everyone's first podcast is always a rough time. It, it's all fine. Uh, next time I'll just try to be a bit more concise with what I say. And, act- and after that, I'm going to go play the Shadows of Rose DLC and see how that turns out. Hope you guys have a good day. You too, man. Bye. See you later. So we're going to move on to the next question here. Let me see. Where am I now? Okay. Number seven. So have you seen any ghost hunters before? People who actively chase after paranormal entities. What are your thoughts on their profession? Zamzara, I want you to go first. Uh, I, I think it's fun. Um, it's it's a little bit silly, but it's fun. Um, being a skeptic, I, I don't really believe they're finding anything, but it, it's cool to, you know, if you could suspend disbelief a little bit, it's good entertainment. And if they're doing it on, um, like, like Ghost Hunters on Discovery, and they're just doing it to make a show, uh, I, I think it's entertainment. Uh, if there's actually, if there were people out there doing it in real life and kind of preying on these people that, you know, maybe believe this stuff for real, and and um, these people are seeking closure or in a bad way. And these people, these ghost hunters would be preying. On, I, I would see it as these people preying on them uh, for profit, um, preying on them being um, just uh, maybe if they're trying to find um, some closure to a family death or just figuring out what is going on in their house or something. It just doesn't seem right. Um, but when it's done uh, for entertainment purposes, I think it's really fun. I watched a ton of ghost hunter shows growing up in, in my teenage years. Um, and it, just the stories that are behind that, I think, is the most fascinating part. Uh, the stories that get told, um, you know, oh, there was a lady in a, like we see a lady in the white dress and that could be, you know, this person from way back in the day. And this is why she might be still around. And all that story behind it, I think, is the most interesting part, not necessarily finding you know a a rocking chair moving or a door closing like that's all fine but i think the history behind it is kind of the the most interesting part of uh those ghost hunter shows um and keeping that history alive um through something like that i think is good um because it makes it more consumable more digestible uh and definitely more interesting than just hearing a history lecture about some town or some house or some family uh when you can uh, tie like a paranormal aspect to it uh, it definitely makes it more more fun to listen to and learn about. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it's all good and it's all fun um, in most contexts. But there are some contexts where I'm just kind of like, yeah, I don't know about that one. I, that, that feels a little bit of predatory uh, um, on those people um, that might believe that. But overall, yeah, I think it's fun. All right. So I want to go real quick. I... I do like what Zanzara said, where it's more of a hands-on experience as opposed to uh, the documentaries that I see where it's like, well, this guy, you know, I know people love their true crime stories, but this guy went insane and this house is haunted for X, Y, and Z and he chopped up his family and stuff like that. So I, I, it's more intimate when the people are there investigating what exactly happened where is the area of crime and violence and what took place in here and and when people start to get readings and say i i don't feel like something's right being in this area i'm getting hairs on my neck that's when you see the real tension i applaud people who have bigger balls than me going into places like this and saying hey we're gonna camp out here in the middle of the cold night not knowing what is going on through these like night vision cameras and we're going to see if we find a sighting um i i I, again it's just giving more context to the story giving more hands-on to what happened here and people explaining like this is actually 
it feels and it is described as some really fucked up shit. So you, you really get in the thick of things when you know all this information. And I that's one thing that I like about ghost hunters and uh, paranormal investigators getting into there and finding readings too. I, I, I like the people that bring their machines as well and they might see it spike up a little bit with ghost activity. That's pretty cool to see as well. So Max, what is your opinion on paranormal investigators? So for me, I know at the beginning of the podcast, I was like, yeah, porn, like par- porn, porn, porn is real. Out there. <laughs> it's out there. No, uh, paranormal invest or paranormal happenings. I was like, yes, I believe that they are real. Uh, ghost hunter store, uh, ghost hunter shows. I'm kind of the opposite on because speaking for myself personally, I if you get me like, um, I don't know what's a good I don't know what's a good word for it. But like when you hype yourself up to be scared so that you're ready to be scared and then lo and behold, you're scared. That's what I feel like a lot of those shows are. I want to agree with Zamzar 100%. The story, the history, those bits are interesting. That I find fascinating. Like the, um, someone will have to remind me on the specifics, but there was some graveyard that like, that, um, it was sinking slowly. And as it sunk, they put more coffins on top of it. And it's like one of the most haunted graveyards ever. That's fascinating. That I find interesting. But for the ghost shows that I, or ghost hunter shows that I have watched, go, uh, seeing people with like shaky cameras and the Outlast style lighting and they're holding those radios, I can see why people enjoy it. Just definitely not for me because sometimes it feels like people are hyping themselves up to be scared. And then they get scared by something that's like, that was literally just the wind. We left the door open and it made the rocking chair move. Not me trying to like poo on it too hard, but not personally my thing as much other than the history of each area. Yeah, I, I definitely agree when, when it's just a point of, I still like it, but there are going to be those people where it's like, you could tell it's fake. And, and like, it's like a Scooby-Doo thing. Like they go in there, oh, we're super excited guys to uh, have our first ghost encounter and it's gonna be really awesome. And we're gonna be grilling hot dogs. Yeah, when it's too much optimism, that's when I don't buy it. But when it's like actual, you know, we're sitting here telling this entire diatribe of what happened uh, and we're really feeling ill and then we need to get out of here. Uh, that's when it's a bit concerning for the crew and that's when i really started to get into it from there but when it's fake i definitely agree with that too it's like oh oh golly gee we're gonna catch a ghost yeah that's when i'm i'm totally out of it so i i resonate with that um that's when you need the old like the old catholic preacher man who's like seen some shit that's when you bring him in and things get a little more (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) the stereotype is like i've seen some shit by god i have seen three children move their heads and puke i know what i'm doing i'm like amen brother i'm not even catholic but i support this (laughs) yeah i i i like that a lot when when they just have that old guy that is sort of the veteran and you have all the young kids that don't know shit that's pretty cool start speaking latin and you're like shit's going down (laughs) but we're gonna move on to the final two questions here so number eight what is your general thought on possession people who might be under control of a ghastly spirit so max i want you to go first well as i talked about in the beginning in the bible that kind of shit happened and it's horrifying and it's awful and it's like it's one of those situations, I'm sure we've all played games or movies and, or seen movies or things where like a demon goes into someone and they're like, you can't kill me. I'm in your best friend. What you going to do about it now? And it creates like a really interesting dynamic, which I think, once again, for storytelling, mechanical things, I think is very fun. Or like if a ghost goes into you and is like, I don't have full control, but I can't stop my arm. There's a lot of good fun to be had there. But in terms of real life possession, like, is it possible or partial possession or anything like that? Yeah, I think it can happen. And I think it's horrifying and awful because they're essentially holding someone captive. So your list of options goes down real fast. And then stories of people who, like, they were possessed, they started, like, just cutting themselves, ripping themselves apart, just, like, going mad, essentially. I think it's real. And I think it's incredibly horrifying. (laughs) which is why it works so well in storytelling mediums. Samzar, what about you? I am the exact opposite. (laughs) I do not believe uh, in any sort of possession 
or anything along those lines. I have friends uh, who are more religious than myself that have experienced things like that, and they claim it's real. I've never seen anything like that with my own two eyes, so I find it very hard to believe. Uh, I think the human mind is a very powerful thing and can make you believe things, um, that things are happening to you that are not really happening to you. Uh, I think there is some sort of real world explanation for possessions or people who believe they are possessed or acting out in some way. Um, and, and I think there's history to that uh, I, where, you know, people are, you know, either mentally unwell uh, and back, you know, 50, 60 hundreds of years ago they had no explanation so they just went with oh though they're possessed so that's what we're gonna go with and then we're gonna you know have a, an exorcism or some sort of ritual to dispel the demon or whatever is inside um so i i don't believe in it um as a storytelling technique or uh something in you know in media i think it's an entertaining concept um but yeah i don't i don't believe anything uh like that is possible in the real world uh but that's just me being a skeptic uh i am personally i don't know i don't know if i would say i'm in the middle because again it, it is one of those things where someone will say something they they will believe it and, you know someone will say oh i have brain damage and someone could just be having a headache sometimes so people would like take things they would take it and they will run a mile uh with certain things and certain beliefs and things that are happening to them which you know i mean everyone has that crazy old man on the lawn conspiracy theorist tinfoil hat screaming about fucking seeing aliens every night come to his backyard and piss on his counter uh there are people to do that and it's just it's just like go to bed or something please for, go back in the house grandpa please uh and, and then it's other things where it's like people play with possession boards and you know ouija boards and i would never personally do it because i don't want to see what goes on with it i don't want things randomly moving around near me or uh ghosts you know speaking letters and everything so uh if i see someone committing a seance or whatever i'm just going to be like all right either i'm burning the board or i am burning the house or i am just going to leave and you know throw the board into the sewer uh so one way or the other but i, I personally would not get involved with any of that stuff uh if it happens to someone you know it, it's just a thing of I, I feel bad but at the same time again people exaggerate so much information that it just wouldn't even be a big deal if they look into the grand scheme and relax sometimes uh so it all is dependent and determinate for me so we're gonna move on to the final question which is probably the most obvious out of the entire document would you ever live in a haunted place for a billion dollars yes or no and i want to start with zamzar Yes, one million percent yes. If you're offering me that kind of money, uh, I will definitely spend the night in somewhere that is supposedly haunted. I will stay in the most frightening place ever for a billion dollars if you want to set that up. <laughs> oh, Max, it's your turn, buddy. I feel like this one's safe to be a little bit more of an open discussion between the three of us. When you say live in, for how long? Mm, all right let me let me put and, and and how haunted is it like is this a house i'm gonna walk in and like shit's flying and i'm gonna be like all right this is what i'm living with today I or was... is it just like i've heard the worst worst things ever i for a billion you know what i i think it would be fair to say them all to to say to say everything yeah to to live in there a month and you'll get a okay, billion mom. dollars Okay, but a friend ghost in a month. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, like, are they are things actively flying, or have I just heard the worst things about it? You heard the worst things about it. Okay, so like we could take the grudge and be like, you're gonna move into the grudge house. Basically, there was some horrible series of murders, da da da, and you have to live in there for a month, right? Yes. See, on one side, we just described the mindset of like, let's not fuck with supernatural. <laughs> because, you know, it's a fourth dimensional thing screwing with us. And I like to think of myself as a good Christian child, but that doesn't mean I want to run around and be like, yeah, I can put, I can send demons out like Jesus. I'd, I'd rather not play a game if I could help it, but 
a billion dollars. I think <laughs> the money is to entice me. I'm like, that's a, even one million. That is a life changing amount of money. Mm-hmm. So my first instinct is yes. But I would not bring any of my things. I would not bring any of my family. It would just be me. And I would and I would spend a lot of time eating out in town. <laughs> and like the moment shit started going down, I'd be like, fuck, sorry, nope, I'm out. Like the you moment at least I see the shot. <laughs> yeah, like the moment I see the grudge girl in the mirror, once I'm like, nope, house yours. Yep, sorry, my bad. I, I didn't know. Bye now. <laughs> <laughs> or like the moment there's like possessed anything, like a chair will fall over. I'll just be like, "Oh, well, that could be a coincidence." It does a flip. Shit! Nope, 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 not gonna do it. <laughs> I would probably so, be I'm, that guy that would be like, "You know what? If, if shit starts going down, I don't mind being like on the street for like a night or two. You know what I mean? I'll come back in the morning where I think everything is safe in the daytime, and then at night I'm just gone." Yeah. Do I want to deal with a drugged out hobo or the grudge girl? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll take the drug down, hobo. I mean, at least if if he's nice, you know what I mean. You got like a couple of dollars to spare. He'll fuck off if you like yeah, give him a sandwich. This is like some next level shit in this house. So, but oh. if it's not the if it's not the grudge girl, Samzar, you're right. I could I could make friends with someone in a month. It's just mm-hmm. a month. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> like you'd be friends. Talk to her. Yeah, like hey, if they're throwing stuff fuck? around, you set up some like dude perfect trick shots for them, keep them entertained. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that'd be funny. But um, I mean, I I'm I okay. So we we talked about this a little bit in like the podcast chat before. I call in the movie either a being the guy who tries to light the ghost on fire and dies vainly, but just you know goes down swinging, or b being the guy who the moment shit starts getting supernatural is just like nope nope fight i'm out nope not gonna deal with it so yes i would try but i'd be real quick to leave same here i i i would be like the second that stuff is going down i'll I'll be like you know what i gotta get some fresh air that's not in the terms of service that's not in the rules right just get some fresh air for like a few hours and then (laughs) you know clear my head and come back and stay in there you know at the front door um in fetal position like a child so you're told to live in a haunted house and you just stay in the front yard where you're like i'm still obeying the rule (laughs) you're just gonna fight club it and stand on the front porch for 30 days (laughs) yeah (laughs) i'd do it yeah (laughs) that that that, if that is in the rules i will i'm fine with that i'll live in a tent yeah if i could test being outside of the premise but i'm still in like square distance i am sleeping outside and i'm gonna make some marshmallows fuck it your pinky toes in the corner wait wait can we burn down the house does that count <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> <laughs> the well, we need a lawyer. Kind of does, it's a billion dollars. <laughs> does that make the haunting worse though? Because now you just burn down where they're living. Well, now they got nothing to be angry about. No, it would make it worse. It would make it so <laughs> worse. <laughs> They'll be extra pissed at you. Unleash then the you whole free them, and then they're no longer tied to just the house. Then they just follow you around. Oh God. <laughs> so you're saying we are either us three? We are either the best or the worst people. For this challenge, <laughs> probably the worst. <laughs> probably yeah. the worst. We would be the best until one pot went flying, and then we would just be like, "Fuck it, burn it down," and then we'd be the worst after that. <laughs> <laughs> but I think this was a great, great fun discussions and times. So we're gonna end this podcast and do our outros. Right. Oh, I was what? gonna say, I, I was just gonna say, I'm surprised nobody mentioned Beetlejuice. I just thought about that within yeah. like the last five minutes. Like, yeah. nobody talked about Beetlejuice. Yeah. I haven't watched Beetlejuice, and isn't he a demon? Well, no, no, no. He he uh-huh. is undead, uh, okay. and and he tries to sort of help the family. Basically, long story short, uh, two of these uh couples, they're both dead, and a new pair of family they move into the house, and now the dead couple is trying to figure out a way to get them out of there uh so they call on beetlejuice to teach them how to be scary and it all is a crazy movie uh, i will recommend watching it because it is so fucking funny um especially the scene where he first appears i michael keaton just like chews the scenery in this mm-hmm. movie he's so great i've seen like one scene from it and correct me if this isn't from beetlejuice but it's like they possess an entire dinner of yes people, uh-huh. and yes, they're all they do. doing like a dance in sync I remember yep. watching that being like, that's hilarious. That's horrifying. 
Uh huh. Like it toes the line hand. really good. Yeah, yeah, it just toes that line between this is terrifying, but also the funniest thing I've ever seen. Because like being puppeteered by something else to do a song and dance routine. Oh, it's just a song and dance routine. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be thrown out of a building in about ten seconds. Oh, this is gonna be good. The great, <laughs> the great thing about that scene in particular is, uh, number one, you see the horror on their face where they they are moving by themselves. They know that something's wrong, and their eyes are like popped out of their head which is entertaining and then you get the eccentric people who are just like people in real life who would say oh that's great i want more of that can we turn this into a tourist attraction please oh, and, no. and and i'm just like no that's like the wrong thing you don't want to do that because you're going to aggravate the spirits even more when I mentioned Five Nights at Freddy's earlier, where it's like, oh, you know, the premise of three, it's like, yeah, we collected all this haunted paraphernalia and we're going to make it a ride. It's like, yes, this is what you do. This will go well. Nothing will happen. I, I like We're that. Asking for it. I like that movie so much because it's it's a comedy and, and, and they do have uh, some ties and it's also eccentric, but there are people like that. There are people that be like, the first thing we're going to do is try to turn this into a circus and make some money. Oh uh, god, heck no! But I, I definitely would recommend watching it, Max, if you haven't. It's a, it's a very good movie. My movie list gets bigger every single day, just like the video game list, the anime list, the book list. Mm -hmm. it never ends. I, it's like I don't need anything new to come out for like twenty years. I have such a backlog. But we're gonna do our outros here. A good, pleasant time all around. Uh, my name is Renegade Operative. You can find me on YouTube at Renegade Operative. You can find me on Twitter at Ren Operative underscore and Twitch at Renegade underscore Operative. Zemzara, what is your credentials, buddy? Yeah, you could find me on YouTube and Twitch. If you just search Zamzara, you'll find me. Uh, I got Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, all that fun stuff. If you search uh, Zamzara on those, you should be able to find me. Uh, the username may be a slight variation, but uh, pretty easy to track down. Max? Oh, my name is Max, also known as Lord Ectro. I'm a variety streamer on Twitch. We're currently going through the Fatal Frame franchise, and uh, we're about to do the closed beta for Outlast, Metal Gear Survive, and uh, doing the Metroid franchise, which I'm pretty excited about. You can find me on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, all as Lord Ectro. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me. This like, I feel a little out of depth because I kept like bringing demon stuff in, but this talking specifically about ghosts is a very good time, and I'm very happy that I started Fatal Frame right as we were doing this podcast because it really got me into the spirit of it. Oh yeah, no problem. I, I think uh, a full blown demon discussion is coming, as well as aliens and and whatever else I can pull out of the subgenre that people like. You know what I mean? Uh, it's always a good time, you know, to break that up and see what we can do with it. But this was like fun. I had fun. I had a good time. And I have to tell the people out there in YouTube land that we are signing off. So hopefully you really enjoyed this podcast. And once again, take care of yourselves. Don't get possessed. See you later.